Welcome to the Baha'i House of Worship. This is a very special weekend, weekend in a very special year, and it's a pleasure for us to have each one of you with us today. The year is the 75th anniversary of the visit to North America by Abdul Baha, son of the founder of the Baha'i faith, faith Baha'u'llah. This year, Baha'is across North America are commemorating the Diamond Jubilee of that 1912 visit. This weekend is the anniversary of the precious days after Baha spent in the Chicago area. It was during those significant days that he, with his own hands, laid the foundation stone for this house of worship, which he called the Mother Temple of the West. Naturally, it is an exceptionally significant event in the history of the Baha'i faith, and the commemoration of the act is a very special event for Baha'is. As with any commemoration filled with joy and wonder, we wanted to share this day with friends and family, so we invited each one of you to be with us for these happy hours this afternoon. We are delighted to see each one of you. On behalf of the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of the United States and the director and staff of the Baha'i House of Worship, welcome and thank you for coming. A simple program has been planned for the afternoon and of course we'd like to begin with prayer. A prayer for unity given up to us by Baha'u'llah will be said in several languages. It will be read first in English, then in Arabic, Chinese, and in Spanish, there will also be a prayer read in Russian. After the prayer for unity is read, another selection from the words of Baha'u'llah will be sung. And the last, song, last prayer to be sung is one inspired by our faith and by love for humanity. Will the prayer readers please come forward? Oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal to them thy great purpose. May they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O God, in their endeavor, and grant them strength to serve thee. O God, lead them not to themselves, but guide their steps by the light of knowledge, and cheer their hearts by thy love. Verily, thou art their helper and their Lord. Oh, Shangdiah 
成员，您是他们的天助者，他们的主宰。<咳>我是你们人类。你们知道为什么我建造了你们所有的宝贝，为了让别人不能高举你们？记得所有的宝贝，所有的宝贝都是我们所造的。我们所有的宝贝都是我们所造的。我们所有的宝贝都是我们所造的。我们所有的宝贝都是我们所造的。我们所有的宝贝都是我们所造的。我们所有的宝贝都是我们所造的。我们所有的宝贝都是我们所造的。чтобы всем существом вашим и всем деянием, всеми делами вашими являли вы дух единения. Only Dios, only Dios, une los corazones de tus siervos y reveleles tu gran propósito. Pueden ellos seguir tus mandamientos y atenerse a tu ley. Ayúdales, oh Dios, en sus esfuerzos y confiéles fuerza para servirte. Oh Dios, no los abandones a sí mismos, sino guía sus pasos con la luz de tu conocimiento y anima sus corazones con tu amor. Verdaderamente, tú eres su ayuda y su Señor.
Thank you. That was lovely. For those of you who visit the House of Worship often, I think you've just seen some familiar face and a talent that we don't often, often uh, get to experience. So that was very nice. Thank you again. The next part of the program is a particular delight for me, and I think it will be for you too. Last night, we had a wonderful evening with the guests I'm about to introduce to you. For those of you who were able to be here, I think you'll agree that it was an evening to be remembered for a long, long time. This room has been the scene of many special programs, but last night's was a star among them, and I want to tell you just a little bit about it. The enlarged photographs on the walls here in, in the room on both sides were taken during Abdul Baha's visit to America in 1912. They represent seven of the very significant acts he performed while here, and two of these were right in this area. One of them we're commemorating today. As one looks at the photograph, you can see the light and power, kindness and suffering and victory in the figure of Abdul Baha. Last evening, in music and in readings, we recall the days spent with the friends in the Chicago area, and especially the day of the laying of the foundation stone for this house of worship, this dawning point of the praise of God. For this building was to be built as a gift to all peoples of the world, that people from all faiths may come to pray and meditate here. And so that day of the laying of that stone, which is still just where Abdu'l Baha laid it 75 years ago, was commemorated last evening and is again today. Recall that after he turned over the first of the earth, people of all races and many nationalities, both men and women, assisted in digging the hole for that stone, and several wrote accounts of that day. We reread those accounts. And for most of us, that day is only to be read about, but for a few, a precious few living treasures, there are actual memories of that day in 1912. And last evening, they brought us, brought us who were not there, a very special gift by sharing those memories with us. Several of these living, tre living treasures themselves came from distant places. They came from California, New Jersey, Florida, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Arizona. One person traveled all alone. It was, a, it was the most brave act, I think, uh, that she performed in order to, to spend a few hours with us. And as we watched them singing together at the stage in a sort of a reunion, it was the privilege of those present to step back into the memories of these wonderful people. We laughed, and some of us cried a little bit, and we shared time together in this diamond jubilee celebration. And for me to be able to introduce them to you is an honor. And because I'm an American Indian, honoring our elders, and honoring our elders is a, is a way of, of life and, and something that occurs at every important occasion. It seems particularly right that we do that today. I'm going to read a list. It's already printed in your program, but I'm going to tell you just a little bit about each one of them. And after all the names have been read, I'll ask them to stand so that we can acknowledge them. I'm not sure they're all still with us today, but if they are, we, can, we, will, we will acknowledge them after I read the names. Miss Edna True is from Wilmette, Illinois now. She's 98, the daughter of Mrs. Corrine True, who was known as the mother of the temple, because she worked so hard to see that this temple was begun. Her, uh, Edna's mother carried the plans for the house of worship to Abdu'l Baha in Haifa and she helped to locate the site and handle the finances for it. And Miss True, who's with us today, was with Abdu Baha on a number of occasions. Miss Isabel Windest from Benton Harbor, Michigan. She's the daughter of Albert Windest of Chicago, one of the two men who drafted the letter asking Abdu Baha for permission to build this house of worship on behalf of the First Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Chicago. Many of you have seen a picture which is out in a visitor's area here with Abdu Baha and a number of, of guests taken in Lincoln Park. And in that picture, there's a little girl with a scowl on her face. And, uh, and her hair is newly shorn. And that is Isabel Windest. Uh, she told us last night that 
she was unhappy shortly before that picture was taken, so took the shears to her own hair. And her father's in the picture, standing near the back in the, in the row, and he doesn't look too pleased about it either. <laughs> um, but I, if you take a, take a moment later on, maybe you can pick her out in that picture and have a chance to say hello to her. Mr. Monroe Iowas from Forest Park, Illinois, is the son of Charles Iowas, who with Albert Windus drafted the letter we just mentioned. He is also the brother of Leo Iowas, who assisted our beloved guardian, Shoghi Effendi. Mr. Joseph Iowas, also a um, son of Charles and brother of Monroe. But something special about Joseph is that he was named by Abdul Baha. He was given the name Joseph. Uh, in a letter uh, by Abdul Baha. Mrs. Ruhia McComb from Sarasota, Florida, who traveled alone to be with us. She's 83 years of age. She was eight years old when Abdul Baha came to visit, and she has vivid memories. If you, have a, if you have a chance to talk with her about them, please do. She also has brought some special treasures and photographs with her that she's been sharing with us. Again, in the picture, which is out in the visitor's area, there's a lovely little girl with, with ringlet curls of dark brown hanging down. And that girl is, is uh, Ruhia Bakum, who also was given her name by Abdul Baha. Another very special guest is Mr. Donald Kinney. When Abdul Baha arrived in New York, the first home he stayed in, and the place where he met the friends for the first time, was in the Kinney home. And he gave his first speech there. He spent much time while he was in New York in that home. Donald Kinney's father was Edward B. Kinney, and Donald had the opportunity to meet with him. Mrs. Sophie Lady, who is 96 years of age and lives in Wilmette at the Baha'i home. She grew up in the city of Chicago. She was on the temple grounds at the time of its dedication, and she remembers it very clearly. Mrs. E Eva May Swingle Davaduk. Now she saw Abdu Baha uh, not here but in Cleveland. She's 86 years of age, and her mother, Murda Swingle, attended the dedication ceremony of the House of Worship. In the April issue of the Baha'i News, uh, the one that is available to you now, there's a photo taken at Dr. Swingle Sanatorium in Cleveland on May 6, 1912, uh, by Abdu Baha. It's a picture of Abdul Baha and friends. And Mrs. Davaduke is, is consented to participate in a um, commemoration ceremony in Cleveland next week as well. Mr. Paul Bowles uh, from Kenosha, Wisconsin, he was on the temple grounds at the time of the dedication. He was only nine months old. And he said to us last night when he recalled that he'd been visiting with a young mother and her, her baby that perhaps it was that way when he came, that he was a baby asleep much of the time but uh, one who was told of all the events and feels as though he can certainly remember them. Abdu Baha, Baha was a guest at, the, at uh, Mr. Uh, Bowles' grandparents' home in Kenosha when he went to Wisconsin and stayed there for a day and a half. Dr. Dean Bond from Brilliant, Wisconsin, met Abdu Baha uh, again in Kenosha, not here at the temple dedication, but in September of 1912 when he went to Wisconsin. Mr. Shinji Yamamoto from Madison met Abdu Baha as a child in San Francisco. His father, Kenichi Yamamoto, became the first Japanese Baha'i. And so Shinji is also very special uh, to us. Mr. Sil Mrs. Sylvia Parmalee from Wilmette. She didn't meet Abdu Baha in America, but met him when she was 11, when she accompanied her mother to Haifa, to the, to, uh, the Holy Land, to uh, meet Abdu Baha. He gave her the name of Badier, and uh, her family has passed this name on to one of her granddaughters, who is currently living in Guyana as a, as a Baha'i pioneer there. Uh, I'd like now if all of our very, very special guests would um, please honor us by standing so that we can see who you are.
takes a minute, but it's worth it. We waited a long time to stay, and we'll remember it for a long time.